Welcome back everyone, this time we will create some nice lightning effects in Godot. By the end of this video, you will be able to create your own lightning effects and customize them as you want. This tutorial is divided into three parts. First, we will need to create some objects for our lightning effect and we will export them to Godot. Then, we will create some textures for the lightning effects. And finally, we will go ahead and create some shaders, where we will make the texture flickering, glow and move using the shaders. Ok, let's start creating the objects we need. So, let's open Blender and let me delete this and create a plane. I will rotate this and move it up, scale it, maybe a little bit more. I can add some loops to it and activate the proportional editing tool here to move it and give it some variation. Something like this. We can shrink it a little bit here. And maybe we can, for example, rotate this. Like this. Awesome. Now we can check if the UVs are okay. So let me go here and go to the UV editor and let's select this upper part and expand the selection with Ctrl plus and we can see that the UVs are going from the top to the bottom so this is perfect this is what we want cool so now let's create another mesh this time I will create a plane maybe I can expand it a little bit and finally I will create a cylinder mesh and here in the properties I will set this to nothing and I will go ahead and move it a little bit expand it something like this this will be our explosion wave yeah, something like this is ok so let me select the mesh press W shade smooth shade smooth Say the smooth. And now, if we go here to the top, we activate the face orientation. We can see that the cylinder is pointing outwards. And I want this to point inwards. So I will go to edit mode, select the mesh, go to mesh, normals, flip. So now the faces of the cylinder are pointing inwards. Awesome. And now I will add a new material for each mesh. So I will select this, create a new material, select this, new material, select this, new material. And finally, I can go ahead and combine all the meshes with Ctrl J. Cool. So this is our Thunder Mesh. I will export this file, export. OBG and let's name this Thunder Mesh. So now let's go ahead and let's drag our mesh into Godot. And this is our mesh, and as you can see here, now we have three material, one for each object. But we cannot edit these materials. In order to edit this, we first need to put our mesh into the scene. Select, right click over here, make unique, once again right click and save, name this thunder underscore editable, save, awesome, so now we can click here and we can assign a new material for each mesh. With this we have all the meshes we need in Godot, now 
let's go ahead and create the textures for our lightning effects. I will use Photoshop for this, but you can use free alternatives like GIMP or Krita if you want to. I will create a new vertical image. Let's draw some zigzag lines in a new layer. Make sure that it goes from the middle top to the middle bottom. This will be a repetitive texture. Use the eraser tool to give some variation. Right click on the layer and in blending options enable the stroke option. Set it to outside, gradient mode. Let's pick a black to gray gradient. Now click in this little plus icon, set it to reverse inside and I want this to go from white to gray. Adjust the size, something like this. Let's save this. This will be the thunder texture. Now let's make the wave texture. I will draw a line and use the wind filter. Expand this. I will duplicate this layer, move it a little bit and set the mode to subtract. Now with the eraser tool I will delete some parts of it. Let's save this. Finally, for the mark texture, I will draw a big circle using the big soft brush and I will use the Ditto tool to deform this circle. Nice. So now we have our textures. By the way, I want to rotate this 90 degrees like this. Move this to Godot. Awesome. With our textures done, now we have all we need to start creating the visual shaders and materials in Godot. So now we can start creating our materials. Let's first create this material for the thunder. Click here, new shader material. Create a new resource and look for a Visual shader. Let's name this thunder underscore shader. Create. Awesome. So now we can drag and drop our shader here into the material. And if we click it here, we can now set this to cool mode disabled. Also, I want this to be unshaded. Cool. So now let's open our shader editor and start creating our shader. I want to use the thunder texture so I will take this and I will plug this into the albedo for now. This is our texture but I want this thunder to move so I can use an UV panning node, connect this and I will use a time node and I will multiply this time node for a vector 2, connect this to the offset and here I can put a value for example 0 in the x and minus 0 0.5 in the y axis. So now it's moving. Cool. Now we only have one problem. This doesn't look like a thunder, right? So in order to fix that, we can use a special node. Let me disconnect this 
and because this is a black and white texture we only need to use a single channel so I can decompose this and pick the red channel and look for the step node I will use the smooth step node connect this here and here as you can see let me set here a value for example 0 0.7 and here in the edge 0 let me show you for example I can put a value of 0 0.5 and you can see how this reduce its size let's try with 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.1 as you can see as we go from 0 to 1 we can make this thunder disappear so that's the idea is to move this value from 0 to 1 to make this disappear we could use a time node to do that but the only problem is that the time node is always increasing and counting for example it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and keeps going infinitely so this doesn't work for us instead of using the time node we need to use a node that goes from 0 to 1 during the lifetime of the particle lamentably Godot doesn't have that node yet but I can show you a trick in order to do that let me close for a moment the shader editor and I will move this thunder mesh we don't really need this mesh what we need is a GPU particle system and here we can set for example into the process material we can create a new particle process material and into the draw passes we need to assign our thunder mesh and we have a lot of thunder meshes so let me set the amount to 1 and set the lifetime to 5 and here into the accelerations set the gravity to 0 cool so now we have our particle system with our mesh so let me show you something if we go here into display into color curves we can for example here set a color and we can here set a color ramp so for example let me show you I will pick this input node and pick the color input I will put our thunder texture into the alpha channel and the color texture here in the albedo and here if I set a new gradient texture we can see how this color goes from black to white during the particle lifetime and here black is 0 and white is 1 in the RGB color vector so we can use this in order to move our edge from 0 to 1 so instead of using the color as a color I will plug this into the smooth step so as you can see now we get this disappearing effect but we get this intense bright in order to fix this we can use a remap node and it goes from 0 to 1 and I want it to go from 0 to 0 0.7 connect this to the edge and now we can see how this starts super bright and disappear gradually which is awesome and this is based on the particle lifetime which is now 5 seconds instead of five, 5 seconds I want it to have a lifetime of for example 0 0.25 so it looks more like a lightning right it goes fast I can also modify the speed here and make it go from 0 to minus 1 like this and now we only need to add a color for this so this time I will use a for the color I will use a texture 2D and set this to gradient texture here I will enable HDR 
And here I can set a color, for example, this. I can set a row value of 0 0.1, 0, and 4. This intense blue. And here I, was, I will set a value, for example, of 1, 2, and 10. So we get this super intense blue gradient. If we click the eye here, we can see it. And we can now connect our texture here into the UV and connect this to the albedo channel. So we get this lightning effect. Awesome. By the way, in the mesh here, we don't see it because we set this input, which only works for the particle system. So we can see it here. I will delete this. Awesome. Our lightning is done. Now we can go ahead and create the material for the floor mark. So let me go here. And in the surface one, let's create a new shader material. Click here. We need a shader for this. So I can go here, create a new resource. Look for a visual shader. Let's name this mark shader. Great. Let's drag this into our material 2. And let's set this, for example, to be unshaded. Nice. Oh, by the way, we don't see any changes here in the editor. This is a bug in Godot. So in order to fix this, we need to restart Godot. OK, so now we can see the material. Now it works. So let's go to shader editor. And here I can drag my floor mark texture here. And because this is a black and white, we only need a single channel. So I will pick, for example, the red channel and plug it to the alpha. So now we can see the mark. But I want this mark to disappear from the particle lifetime. So I will once again use the secret technique. Instead of using the time node, I will pick the color, which already have our gradient, and use this gradient, multiplying it with the texture. Plug it into the alpha channel, and now we can see how this disappears over the lifetime of the particle. Cool. Now we need to add a color for this, so let me create a new color parameter. Let's name this mark color let's enable this and connect this into the albedo now if we go to the shader here if we click the material in shader parameters we can set a color something like this okay cool we have the thunder material done we have the mark material done now let's go ahead and do the wave material. So go here into the surface too. Let's create a new shader material. Click and we need a shader. So I will go here, create a new resource. Visual shader. And let's name this wave underscore shader. Create. We can drag and drop this into the material. And here I want this, for example, I want this to be unshaded. Once again, this is a book in Godot. We don't see the changes here, so we need to restart Godot. OK, I have just restarted Godot. Now I can see my material here in the particles. So let's go ahead and open the shader editor. And let's start creating our shader. I will pick the expansive wave texture over here. And this is a black and white texture, so we only need to use a single channel. Connect this to the alpha channel. We can see how it looks like this. And I want this to move up. So in order to do that, I can use a UV panning node. Connect it here, and in the offset, I once again I will create a time, but not a time. 
I will pick the color, which already have the gradient time, and I, I will use that. But first I will multiply this by a vector 2. And here I want to set a velocity from 0 to 1, like this. But we can see this hard edge here. We don't want to see that. So in order to fix this, I can go ahead and create a new gradient texture. Gradient texture 2D. And here I want to edit this. For example, I want this to go from the top to the bottom like this. And here we can, for example, modify this, the intensity of it. We'll pick something like this. So now I can multiply the texture for the gradient in order to hide those edges. Maybe here I can put a black color here. Yeah, something, something like this. So now we only need to add a color, so I will go ahead and create a new color parameter. And let's name this wave color. Enable this. And connect this to the albedo. Now if I go ahead into the material, if I click it into the shader parameters, I can modify this. Set a value, for example, of 0 0.5, 1, and 4. Maybe five. Yeah, something like this. Cool. So now we have our thunder. Awesome. Now I will close the shader editor, go to the particle system, and here I will set, for example, an amount of two and a life randomness of 0 0.1. In particle flags, I will enable rotate Y. In the spawn position, I will set this to a box in a range of 4, 0, 4. So now it spawns in multiple places. In the angle, I will set a random value between minus 180 and 180. And finally, in display, I want this to have a random scale between 1 and 2. So, that's essentially it for this tutorial. I invite you to take this to the next level by adding some more stuff to it. For example, marks on the ground and more particles. You can also convert these nodes into parameters, so it's easy to edit them directly in the editor. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.